good morning. It is day in the life of a chronic dialysis nurse. I actually have a later morning today. I don't have to be to work till 7. So I set my alarm for 6 and I hit the snooze button once. I have a pro tip for you guys. As a dialysis nurse, you are working with a lot of bleach to clean things. So a lot of these scrubs will end up with bleach on them. So, fair warning. I also used to be pretty lazy about washing my face in the morning, having to get up so early, but having to wear a mask all day, I had a lot of breakouts. I went to my dermatologist and she recommended Delta MD. Started that and my skin's been doing a lot better. I also changed my mask like two to three times a day. I do have a link below for the Elta MD facial cleanser. If you click on the link, that I do get a little kickback, so I appreciate that. Now, this is the favorite part of my morning where I feed Bubba some tuna. She gets a little bit of Shiba every morning and she's getting a little excited. So let's get her fed. If I'm being super honest, about once a week I get McDonald's. It's cheap and they have a lot of good deals and I like it. Otherwise, last night we ordered in Chinese, so I'm bringing in leftover Chinese. And then I usually fill up my Nalgene with water. I'm on the road. It's about 6.38. I have to be to work at 7. It takes me about 15 minutes to get to work. I do stop at Quick Trip for coffee. I wish that I could say I was one of those people that got up early and made coffee and did some food prep and had a lunch ready, but I, I am not one of those people, okay? And if you're not, that's okay. Here it is, my Quick Trip coffee, 24 ounce. It's a big one, cause I love coffee and dialysis. Now let's go to work. All right, I made it to work. Safe and sound. I've got my purse, I've got my lunch, and I've got my stethoscope. I'll see you guys in there. Hello, welcome to Dialysis Nurses Supporting Nurses Dialysis Clinic, where we have coffee cups. I have different graphics for all different people, and this is the other side. Link below if you would like to purchase one. The boss is here, and coffee's not allowed on the unit, so I gotta get rid of this, so I'll be right back. Oh, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to the clinic floor. Dialysis is complicated and there is a lot to learn at the dialysis clinic. This is going to be a very simplified day in the life of a chronic dialysis nurse. There is a lot to learn at the dialysis clinic and I'm not going to overwhelm you with everything that you have to learn. I just want you to get a general idea of what it's like to work at a dialysis clinic so you have a better idea if dialysis nursing is right for you. To start the day, the person that needs dialysis will come in to the waiting room. Because of COVID, they will have their temperature checked and then the nurse or the dialysis tech will bring the patient into the unit. First thing you do when you bring them into the unit is you get their weight and then you bring them to their dialysis chair. That's the other thing that I love about dialysis is we do everything in kilograms and liters. One kilogram equals one liter and one liter equals 2.2 pounds. So when somebody comes in and they're 45 kilos, I have no idea what that means in pounds. And it's kind of a nice way for people to not be really that embarrassed about their weight because nobody really knows what kilograms mean. If they come in in a wheelchair, you just need a sitting blood pressure. But if they drive there, if they walk in and they walk out, you need to get a starting standing blood pressure and a starting sitting blood pressure. The goal of your assessment as a dialysis nurse is number one, you wanna assess for signs and symptoms of sepsis. And the second thing you wanna do is assess for signs and symptoms of fluid overload. You'll do it a few thousand times and you'll get a good routine. I'll ask her how she's been feeling. Mrs. Green, are you having any symptoms of infection? Do you have a fever, chills, sore throat? Do you have any pain with urination if they still make urine? Do you have any open wounds that are oozing anything? If she has a catheter, I will take a look at her catheter to make sure that there's no signs and symptoms of infection there. I'm going to assess her fluid status. I'm going to talk to Mrs. Green. How is your breathing today? Are you having any shortness of breath? I'm going to look at their legs. Do they have any edema? Depending on other diagnosis, some of our patients will have fluid accumulate in their lungs more often than in their legs. And tell me what type of heart failure that is. If it's left, left goes to the body. And if that's weak, things are gonna get backed up into the lungs. So left-sided heart failure is more fluid in the lungs. Right-sided heart failure is edema. 
Next, I'll also look at their fistula. Here's another pro tip, you guys. Nate told me this one, I think, when he was shadowing. So you feel a thrill, all right? So you feel a thrill and you hear a brewery. You'll do a brief cardiac assessment, and then you'll also have them lean forward, and sometimes you can do this when they're standing, and you'll have them take a couple of deep breaths. Once I do all of that, I will get out of the way and I will continue my assessment. I will look at blood pressures, I will look at weight gains, and then we determine how much fluid that we need to remove. And we set the machine according to the doctor's prescription. Each patient assessment takes about 15 minutes. Once I'm done with that, I will go to the next. At my clinic, I am the nurse for nine patients and I have techs that help me. Depending on your dialysis clinic, it may vary. My clinic has three shifts. We have a morning shift, an afternoon shift, evening shift, shift one, two, and three. Most patients are on the machine for three hours, three and a half hours, or four hours, depending on their size and depending on their fluid gain. While they're on the machine, we will be checking their blood pressure every half an hour to make sure that they are tolerating dialysis okay. We will also make sure that their access is always visible. There is a lot of blood moving through this fistula, so we need to be able to see these needles. We need to make sure that their arm is dry, if, because if their arm is under that blanket, they could lose a lot of blood before we even see a mark on the blanket. We have a med pass which is like the best med pass ever because they're all IV. We generally give three medications and each of those medications is either related to their anemia or their renal osteodystrophy. Dialysis can be challenging for many reasons but one of the challenges while they're on the machine is that they get cold. They say that it is cold from the inside out. And so a lot of patients are encouraged to bring their own blankets. Some clinics have a blanket warmer and the dialysis nurses supporting nurses clinic we built them a fire. There you go, Mrs. Green, stay warm. I'll be back to check on you in 15 minutes. If you need anything, please ring that bell. I'm always here for you. Once their dialysis is done, the machine will ring off, ding, 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 and then either yourself or the dialysis tech will come and rinse them back. They will give them their blood back. They will get blood pressures. If they came in in a wheelchair, we'll just get a sitting blood pressure. If they walked in, we'll get a standing blood pressure because we don't want them to stand up, walk to their car, start driving, and then pass out because they have a low blood pressure. So we need to make sure that they have a stable blood pressure before they leave. The needles that we use in fistulas are large, so once we take those needles out, patients have to hold pressure for 10 minutes. Again, there is a lot of blood flowing through that fistula. So we need to make sure that their bleeding has stopped before we send them home because if they go home or if they're driving and they're bleeding, that can be catastrophic. Next, once we make sure that they're stable, their bleeding has stopped, they will get to the scale and we will weigh them again. All right, guess my day at work is done. I'm gonna go clock out and take a drive home. All right, I'm all done with work. I'm on my way home. And what can I tell you about today? It was not the easiest day I've ever had. Some days are just emotionally hard. Dialysis is a life-saving procedure and it's not gonna save people's lives forever. And there are days that we discharge people to hospice and um, those are just some of the hardest days. But I'm grateful for the dialysis community. I'm grateful for these dialysis patients and their families it's there's a lot of love in those rooms and the reason why you have hard days is because there is a lot of love and there's a you get through it together and one day at a time